Okay, so now we're going to discuss making a, um, you know, a viper pattern, you know, design pattern. We're going to discuss specifically the E in viper. We've already discussed V, view, I, interactor, P, um, presenter, E is the entity and R is the router. We've discussed VIP and R. We have not discussed the E. <laughs> Excuse me. The E is the entity. And what is the entity? Simply put in Viper design pattern, the entity is the actual data model that you will depend on to parse the JSON response. Furthermore, while it's common to use entities to parse and represent JSON data received from API calls, entities are not limited to just that purpose. They can also encapsulate other data types and structures within the application, such as database entities, user input objects, or any other domain specific data objects. So, so in this project, I'm going to create a data, um, um, uh, an a, um, a project that makes an API call. What we're going to do is we're going to have an app that translates a regular English sentence into Yoda speak, you know, like in the movie, right? Like Star Wars, right? So, um, so in order to do this, we're going to go to this URL, funtranslations.com slash API hashtag Yoda. That's how we do this, okay? And we'll get to this, this English translator, right? This is a group of free APIs that translate. You know, you can, from English to Yoda, English to Pirate, Valley Girl Speak, Minion, Furba Latin, Pig Latin, Valerian, I don't even know what that is. Hodor, I think that got something to do with Lord of the Rings. The list goes on, right? Klingon, Romulan, okay? Cockney, okay, that might be a little bit politically incorrect. Um, but you know what I'm talking about, right? So I will go to here and let's delve into the yoda api i don't know i'm gonna close and stop translation services all right so this is going to be the url we will use okay and when you go here and post yoda okay and what is and these are the parameters the parameter we're going to send for the query string, the text is going to be, it's going to be text is the parameter, the key, the value um, is going to be of type string, right? And that's what we will get from our text field when we do our input, okay? And this should return, um, this should return uh, another string, except the one we send is, is in English, regular English, what we get back is in Yoda English, right? So, so now I went and I opened up an app called Postman. If you don't have it, you need to go and download it on your machine. Just do a Google search for Postman. Um, basically, it allows you to test your... Um, your API calls, query string, and you can test and see what you get back while even putting it into, um, while even trying to put it into a browser or put it in your app, right? You know, you can kind of test and see that it works, right? So that's what we're gonna do here. So this is it right here. API, no, not fun translations. Where is the, uh, so this is it right here. Here's the full URL. We're gonna go ahead and copy this, okay? Stop. So like I said, we're gonna copy it, go here, 
and we're going to put it here in the get request, okay? Right here, I'm going to say text. Um, and I'll say, Yoda, you are very brilliant. Yoda, you are very brilliant. And I will send and then see what our response is. And this is our response right here, okay? Go to the bottom, and it says right here, well, I said, Yoda, text Yoda, you are very brilliant. Yoda, very brilliant you are, is the response translated. So we know that this works, right? Okay. Now, what we need is to create a model that would be used to kind of... Um, that would fit this, right? That basically describes this. So then when we make our API call, we're gonna get back some information of type data. And we have to parse through that so that it returns, um, so that basically it returns our JSON properly formatted and making sense. Well, if what I'm saying doesn't make sense. I have other videos that have talked upon JSON, talked about JSON parsing, but I'm gonna, do this for you and we're going to we're gonna have json parsing in this video right uh, again you can look at my other videos i've already uh covered um i've already covered uh using um postman json and json responses okay so let's go ahead and get this back this formatted stuff but in order to get this formatted stuff you know, I've got to, um, when I make the API call in the app, it comes back as data and I need a model to have a return in a way that we can use it. Okay. So I'm going to keep this open and I'm going to go here and let's go to entity right here, translation, right? And um, I am personally, well, I, I don't have to, I can leave this as foundation but um let's discuss this okay let me go down here right let me uh, stop stop it you're killing me let me go down here i need to raise this up a little bit i need to raise some of this up there we go okay all right our main object and you can look at it just like this this part the success total Mm, that's not really what's important for us, right? What's important for us is um, contents, translated, text, translation, okay? Right? So basically, this whole thing is an object, right? And this object has um, has two other, has two other, so these right here denote an object, okay? This right here and these lines, this denotes a key value pair, right? So that means success has an object with a property of one. Contents is another key value pair. You know, the key is contents and the value is an object with three different um, key value pairs, right? Translated, the key, and this is the value, Yoda, very brilliant. Text key, Yoda, you are very brilliant. Translation key, and the value is Yoda, okay? So let's go ahead and write that in form, right? Let's write that in, um, so let's go ahead and start with, um, Again, let me go back here and let's just, right? Right, so we have an object. This object is going to be called, I'm gonna call it translation response. This is an entire thing, right? And it has two properties, right? Success and contents. That's it, right? That's gonna be our first one. Let's go ahead and do that, okay? Cool. 
they struct translation response code a bull And you know something? The reason why this is code not coming up is because I need to import Swift UI. All right, let's go ahead. Foundation just isn't doing it. Codable. Okay. And um, well, no, foundation to do it. I just spelled it wrong. Okay. Okay. Codable. And we have two properties. Let S U success. Right is of type object success. Of course, that doesn't exist yet. We'll get to that though. Okay. We're going to create another one called contents. Let's it's all crap. <sighs> okay. We're going to call this translation contents. Trans. Relation contents and this should throw errors. Why? Because we need to create objects for this, right? Struct okay, success, right? I'm going to create an object called success, just like this, right here. Struct success. Codable. Okay. And now let's make another one called struct translation contents, right? Right. Of type what? Codable. All right. So now. This, of course, you see all the errors start to go away. Now let's see what's in Codable, right? In success, okay? I'm gonna go back here. Okay, success is something called total, right? One, this is of type int, right? And um, it's very simple how we handle this. We can just say total of type one, right? And this is represented in code as let total is of type integer, right? Because that one is an integer it's a number, right? So now we're going to say translation contents. Let's go back over here. Okay. Right. And this is it right here. This is our contents, right? Because contents is a type translation contents, right? Let's go back here. Contents has a translated, which is a string, text, which is a type string, right? Translation, which is what is that? That's a type string. And that's how we're gonna do it. Okay. So let's just do this. Translated. Mm -hmm. Where's my project? Okay. Let's translate it is a type string. Right. Let's text is a type string. Right. Let's translation. Translation. Is of type what? String. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. We have this, and you see there are no errors. But now we have to make sure that this actually, um, this actually works, right? This will actually convert, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm really just double checking my spelling. Translated translation because the spelling has to be correct, right? Spelling of each property must be absolutely correct. Okay. All of these properties must be correct. 
Okay, so. All right. Now that we have our entity, let's go ahead and start creating our content view, right? No, actually, let's go ahead and make, make our network manager. And let's go ahead and get working on our view model, right? So um, let's see. Before we go any further, I need to create two new files because we're going to need these files. One is going to be called um, um, networking error in the T W R error, right? Networking error. We have another one. And this one is going to be called um, U URL utility. Okay. URL. U-T-I-L-I-T-Y, URL utility. Okay, and there we go, right here. So we have both of these. And um, let's go ahead and let's flesh these out, right? Because this is, so basically what we need is, we need something in enum for our custom errors, right? Enum. Custom errors. And so you probably don't really have to follow this that tough because um, this will be in the download. Um, you can go on GitHub, click the link in the description, and go to GitHub and download a zip or clone it to your machine, whichever. So I'm gonna fast forward through this. So this is our networking errors and our response errors, right? So are you, um, Actually, this is in the wrong page. It's supposed to be here, not here. So, um, yeah, see. So X right here, B, okay. Let's see. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, so I'm about to create, I'm going to do our URL utility, but um, yeah, that's what I'm about to do right now. So um, let's go. Okay, so I want to skip over a whole bunch of the functionality, writing it out just to summarize it, because I want because we've gone over some of this before. Um, so this is our networking error. This is our URL utility. This is what we're going to use to build our URL. I have this in a separate struct, URL utility. So basically, you're just going to pass a sentence, okay, of type string. And it it's going to create a query string to append to this URL. <laughs> and we're doing this through URL components. URL components are part of the framework of Swift and Swift UI. URL component dot query item, and this is our query item text and the value sentence. And then we take this URL component and get the URL property. This returns an optional URL. This is what we're going to do to build our URL and pass it to our networking manager. Okay. So we have this, our networking utility, our networking error. Um, and let's go to our networking manager, which I've already built out. Networking manager is a class. And um we're also, it's also going to be a singleton. As you can see, static let shared equals networking manager. And we have a part of our of cancelables, an array of cancelables or any cancelable. Um, and this fetches the API response. Um, and the API response is going to be of type data, right? So um, here's where we use a future, okay? 
future can is kind of this idea right here is kind of similar to syntax wise a result set right you return um a future and it's of type data and error so basically if it's successful you get the data error you get a particular type of error if it's unsuccessful okay we want to make this weak we've covered this our capture list we've covered that in, in earlier videos um so um, our URL session dot data task for publisher. This is different than using a closure. This is combine. Okay. Um, we designate the queue that we want to dispatch on. We want to map our data and our, you know, if it's successful and our response is not. So this is what happens if our status code is within a certain range between 200 and 300 right um otherwise we're gonna throw response dot bad status code that's a custom error in our url utility as you can see okay otherwise we return the data sync receive completion and we're going to have this statement it's pretty unique compared to other things that we've had in using if let and uh, if let type uh, data structures. Um, if case let, if the case is failure, then we're going to switch to error and let URL error. We're going to return an error, right? So um, otherwise, we're just going to default to an unknown error. But if, if we did receive the data and there was no error, then we return a promise, okay? A promise is when you have your desired data. So you return a promise when, or you return a promise that succeeds with data or a promise that fails with a your custom URL error or your unknown error, right? And of course, the end, you want to store this in cancelables. I'm going to make a video that's going to explain cancelable and any cancelable by itself. I'm not going to explain it right now, but just know that this has to be stored in cancelables, which are declared up here. And so, um, of course, this is uploaded to, <clears throat> to GitHub. So if you want to go through it, walk through this and have a closer look at it, you can um, download to your machine. It's completely free and whatever. Okay. So now let's go back to our view model and let's start coding out the, our view model. So I'm going to say Swift UI dot import combine. Okay. And then let's go ahead and get busy. Class view model is of type. I want to make this observable object. We already covered this in um in in one in the, one of the previous tutorials i'm sorry i'm drawing a blank come on getting old publisher published right bar data is of type data comma at p published Var translation is of type TRA translation response. Of course, I'll make that nil at published var sentence 
is this type strain equals <coughs> var and solvables solvables is set. Any cancelable okay, so we have this, and now we're going to create our function. Okay, our function is the fetch translation text. <clears throat> so guard let URL equal URL utility, U R L U utility dot um, build URL with sentence. You're gonna pass in the sentence. Okay. Else this is unwrapping it, right? All right, so we've unwrapped our URL, and now what we want to do is go ahead and get our promise let promise equal networking manager, right, dot shared. This is a singleton, so we're creating, we're accessing this instance that you can only, um, dot shared. Networking manager dot share dot fetch API response. Let me see something. Share. Let me just check something right here. Fetch API response. Sure. I don't know why it's not completing. The API response. URL. Yeah, well, it just was not completing. And URL. Okay, so now that we have that. All right, let's go here. And then we have our promise. Let's translate let. Translated content. I'm just gonna say sentence. That makes more sense. Equal promise dot decode. Right type uh, translation response. Right, dot self um, decode JSON, and of course, I have a JSON decoder. Um, let me go ahead and explain to you the JSON decoder that I haven't added yet. So oh, my bad, JSON decoder is a part of this. I didn't write this. I, I was getting that confused with another video that I've done. But yeah, JSON decoder is part of the combine framework. Um, translated content. Um, 
trans actually translation sentence, translated sentence, right? Dot sync. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this stuff. Because this isn't what I want over here. This is what I want right here. Okay. And of course I'm gonna say sync. Right in okay, and then we're going to say if error reference is I don't know what that I'm going to say completion in. Instance method sync received on publisher required to Um, mm -hmm. if case let let me see something. This isn't supposed to be broken actually. Sentence. Let me see something. Sync. Right, completion, come, uh, completion, right, receive value, okay, response in. Okay, what the heck is going on? In completion in scope. Received completion. Um, okay, um... Okay, let me see something. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this view model. And so we create our promise from our fetch API response. I'm just opening up all this for our fetch API response right here. Right? So we're getting our data back, go back, right? And now let's go ahead and let's create our, um, yeah, so let translated sentence equal promise dot decode, right, um, type in, we decode it, our type is our model, translated response, translation response, which is, let me go back right here, where is, uh, where's my model, where's my model, my entity, I guess, oh yeah, translation, sorry, translation response, right, so that's what I want. I want it to be translation response, of course, dot self, right? And then um, decoder is JSON decoder, right? Okay, so we have that. Now you see this error. Why? Because we're not, um, we're not putting stuff inside our cancelables array, right? We're not using it. So now we're going to use it, right? So we're going to say translation sentence dot sync, right? And get rid of all this crapola, right? Because I want to do this. Um, I'm going to say right here completion. Completion, this is just a variable 
that I'm using to pass back my closure. And I'm going to say receive the value, right? And I'm going to call this um, sentence. <laughs> We want to keep this week, week reference, week, not week bar, week self, right? Keeps the week reference. I'm going to say sentence. So now I'm returning this sentence, but I'm still having this error, right? But let's go ahead and you know, talk about storing in our cancelables array. Okay, now we should get this awesome and stuff should go away. And there we go. Now we just got a warning because it's not being used, but we will use it. Okay, so here when we're syncing, we're I'm gonna say if flat dot if case, sorry, if case let dot failure F A I L U R E dot failure, right, error, okay, equals completion. So this completion is an error we need to, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna print out error, right? And I'm gonna say just, Just something that I can look at my console and see real quick. And error, right? Dot localized description. Okay, so now I have this. And now if I receive the value, right? Um, let's go ahead and so this is our good stuff right here, right? So um, since this is weak, that means it's optional, right? So, or self is optional. And of course, I've already gone over this in another video, All right? So let's go ahead and unwrap it. Guard, let strong self equal self else, okay? I'm going to return. Right, so now that's unwrapped. So now I can use strong self instead of self here dot sentence, right, equals um, strong self dot sentence equals sentence, right, dot contents, right, dot translated. Right, and that should do it all. Okay, so now I am fetching the the translation, right? And so, um, yeah. So now that I'm fetching this, let's see. Okay, so now that we we're going to our content view, let's go ahead and get busy. And I'm just gonna create, um, just see if my thing works, my app works. So right now, um, we're not building out the whole interface right now. So just wanna make sure that my view model works and that the fetch, um information from the api the url utility works and yeah so we're going to start off here we're going to create um a reference to our view model right and of course it's going to start off with um since our view model is of observable object with published you know when we create an instance that would make the stuff in the content view of what observed object we covered this in the viper stuff right at observed object right var 
view model, right, equals view model, right? Okay, so now we have that. We have our at observed object. And um, on when this appears, we don't have view did load in uh, Swift UI. We have on appear, on appear, on appear. Now we're going to say view model. But hold on, what the hell is going on with this? Sorry. Um, view model dot fetch translate a sentence, and I will say, I am strong with the force. Okay, master. Right now, I'm going to go here and I'm going to place and Oh, and by the way, strong with the force, I am master. And um, in my view model, of course, let me go back here. I said to print the output. This is the output right here. I just print it to the console. So I know that this works. Strong am with the force. Strong with the force, I am master. That's correct. That's how Yoda talks. Okay, so um, okay, we have this. So now let's go ahead and get busy, and um, yeah, let's go ahead and get busy. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this, right? And instead of having this here on the view to load, I, I don't want this on view to load. I want this on a button press. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. We're gonna keep this V stack. We're gonna get rid of the stuff inside the V stack, right? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna well, let me, just so we have some a, a little bit of uh, uh, stuff to, um, on the screen, right? It doesn't look bare bones. So I'm gonna say text field. So this is how you're gonna take stuff from a text field, and we're going to display it in a uh in a label or text basically so i'm going to say text field right because we want to input some stuff right and we're going to say i'm going to say title and text title enter english text enter english text okay and then i need to create a variable and this variable is going to have a state property wrapper okay um state right uh, i'm gonna say um bar sentence right it's a type string right and with a default value of empty Okay, that's my default value. It's an empty string and I'm going to say sentence. And how I put sentence in here, right? Well, actually, I'm also gonna have another one, right? And another one is going to be, um, I'm gonna call this input text at eight bar, stop, bar in, Input text, input text in the subtype string, right? And this is also an empty string. And I'm going to use input text is going to be here. You reference it here by dollar sign, input text, okay? And I want to have uh, some attributes to kind of clean this up, right? Uh, text feel, style, um, rounded, uh, corner style, right? And um, with some padding, dot padding. Um, yeah, we'll do it like that. 
And I'm going to have something else. This is a vertical stack. I'm going to have a button under here, button. This is translate to Yoda speak. That's the language we want to translate to Yoda speak, not English. Translate to Yoda speak. Okay. So, yeah, we translate to Yoda speak, right? And then I'm going to, this is where we call the view model, fetch, translation, text, and this will be our my input text. The input text, where this is set, right? So I'm, basically the rule is this right here is where I set this set this value but just to access it i'm going to this is like setting right boom 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 right this is where you set it this is where you get right okay so i'm getting sentence in here right plus on top of that this accepts a straight up string that's what we said in our function okay all right so just just to put that out there okay and then now let's go ahead and add some uh some stuff to make our button look presentable right that padding padding and i don't want a whole bunch of crap dot foreground color dot white dot dot background right dot background color dot blue okay and dot corner radius dot corner radius ten Right, and then I'm just gonna say Yoda speak output label Yoda speak output right, right. Yoda speak output dot font. Right, that headline, that, and then I'm going to have another text field, right? It's going to be text, right? View model, that what? Sentence, because that's our output, right? When you go back here, to your view model sentence right that's what's being set here in the received value sentence this is the property you're going to access right view model dot sentence okay let's go ahead and put some padding on it right you know, i don't need a whole bunch and then put multi-line text alignment multi-line text alignment dot center right and um right so let's uh right here replace okay succeed it builds and this is what it looks like right here and of course i will say um young the young jedi is strong with the force the Young Jedi is strong with the force. Translate to Yoda speak. Strong with the force, the young Jedi is. So, yeah, this is an example of us using our, um, our entity, right? It, it, as long and along with um 
our networking manager, right? So let's go back and review. This is our entity. It describes the data that we're getting, right? From our API response, right? Right here. This is how we parse it. And of course, I have a whole video on parsing that by itself. Okay. We tied this in. Um, um, we tied this in with our view model. Okay. And our um URL utility, right? Our URL utility, as well as our networking manager, okay? And um, yeah, this will be uploaded up to, um, this will be uploaded to GitHub. So if you need to like really break it down and look at it, because there are lots of details and some stuff you can get wrong about using, um, combine as opposed to just dealing with uh um escaping closures right so um yeah um i hope this clears up some things again the whole idea the entity this is what we keep separate right we have our networking manager over here right we have our url utility over here okay Right. And um I'm trying to think what else. And of course our, our view model, right? A lot of stuff is done in the view model. So um that's it for now and um on to the next.